Hey everybody, I want to do a quick um, refresher video on uh, MLA style basics and I want to give you uh, just, just real quick the, the most important parts of what I think are um, going to help, for you, help you with uh, formatting your papers if you're using MLA style. Um, so remember that MLA style is the Modern Language Association style. Um, I don't know, but Modern Language Association, I don't know why they got to make the decision um, that MLA there's my dog coming in. Um, and that MLA is going to be one of the main, uh, two main, main formatting styles along with APA, uh, American Psychological Association, but they just are. Um, so MLA, the most recent version is MLA 8. Um, not, not a whole lot of difference between uh, 7 and 8. There's just some, some, some minor stylistic differences. Um, you should be able to use uh, MLA 8, there's enough information online that I think you should be able to figure it out. The, the, the um, basic formatting for it is what they want is a sans serif font. What that means is um, not um, a rounded off font. So there's a difference. There's serif and sans serif. Sans serif means uh, without the curve, basically. And the easiest one to use is Times New Roman 12 point font. Um, just, you know, format your paper. And the hard part sometimes is, is people forget to do um, the headers and if you're using the footers, but always in the header um, to, to make sure that that's a Times New Roman 12 point font as well. Um, not too, not, it's not too hard. If, if you use another non sans serif font, that's, that's fine too, but just make sure that you're um, making sure that all of the, uh, all of your typeface is going to be the same font. Uh, it's not too hard, just copy, you know, just select all and then and change the, the font face. It's not a big deal. Um, remember, all the way around the page, um, there you're going to have one-inch margins. Um, if you open a Word document, it should already come as uh, one-inch margins. I think pages documents as well. But remember, um, I, I want you to uh, use Word document or to use, to use Word for your formatting, just because um, it, I know that it works uh, and I can help you out with that, with you know headers and footers and stuff like that if you need help. Um, yeah, just don't mess with the one-inch margins. Remember, I'm, I'm asking you for word count, so it doesn't really matter how many pages you have. So, so it doesn't um, behoove you uh, to change those one-inch margins to anything different. You're not going to get anything better from making the font any bigger either. So just make it 12 uh, times New Roman 12-point font, one-inch margins all the way around. All right, so in MLA, you're going to see at the top, um, you'll have a... I'll have an example of this in a second, but at the top, you're going to have your name block. Right. Well, and before that, up in the header, you'll have your name and then the, the uh, page number. Um, and that that is, you know, there's t tons of tutorials online if you don't already know how to do it on how to put um, your the name and page number up in the header. Uh, if you need to have specific questions, I'll be glad to help you out. Um, but remember, at the top of MLA paper, you're going to have uh, that name block. And it's going to be your name. And then it's going to be your, uh, my name or whoever your instructor's name is. For me, you just put able, that's fine. Um, I know who I am. The next line will be the class. So in this case, it's going to be English 2201, um, section 17. That's all you really need to have there. And then the date. Um, this is one of those attention to detail things that people just don't pay enough attention to. And I can tell that you don't pay attention by, you know, one of the, the first second I open the page, I just look at the dates and see that you got it wrong because you didn't take, you know, a couple seconds to make sure you got the date right. Anyway, MLA, they want the date, the two number date. So if it's, you know, the third, put zero one uh, October and write the whole thing out. And then uh, two, no, no, uh, no comma after the month and just write 2020. That's all you have to do. Um, it's really pretty easy to do it and, and it's really pretty simple for me to know that you, you didn't pay attention in, uh, to do it the right way and it only takes a couple seconds to do it. All right, again in the header, right justified, so that means over, if you do the, um, the left right thing with your fingers, do the right side, um, you just need your last name and the page number and uh, that's, you, you let the computer do the work for you, you just do insert and then there's a page number thing, give a little space and write your name, no big deal. Um, also in uh, MLA as well as APA, um, they want you to make sure that you don't have any extra spaces between paragraphs. Um, one of the problems uh, with Word that I've found is that um, you know the most recent versions of Word automatically insert a uh, half of half a half of um, a space between an e well excuse me an extra half a space so it's a space and a half between uh, paragraphs when you hit the the return function to and tab it over to start a new paragraph so what you have to do is um, 
go in and remove that extra half a space. You just can you select the whole the whole pay, uh, paper once you're done, and then there's a, in the paragraph spacing uh, function in Word, there's a, a way that you can remove the extra half a space. I can show you how to do that. It's a little button you click, and it says um, you know remove space after a uh, new paragraph or something like that. It's really not too too big of a deal. Um, but the one thing I, I can see it, um, I've been doing this long enough that I can see that extra half a space between paragraphs. Um, so if you're going to try to maintain that, um, that good MLA formatting, you want to take that extra half a space out. All right. So, uh, here's an example of, um, what the front first page of a, of an MLA formatted paper should look like. Um, again, you've got your name and the, the page number in the, in the header. You have your name blocks you, down there. You'll have, you know, in this case, Laura Josephson, like that, and then Professor whatever. Uh, and guys, remember, I'm not a professor. I don't have, that's just a title for a position that you have in the school. I don't, I'm just a, a kind of a fly-by-night, um, you know, semester to semester employee. So I'm not a professor. You can just put my last name, it's fine. Um, and then immediately after that name block, you're gonna have the title of your paper centered. It's not bolded, it's not underlined, it's not flashing, it doesn't have Christmas tree lights around it, it's nothing special. It's just the title of your paper, not bolded, not underlined. And then you're gonna go one, just start your paper on the next the next line down. If you can see here, you got this indent of one half, a half inch space, a one half inch indent. Um, I like to have a little bit more space. I think it's nice to have a little breathing room, especially in um, using computers because you know you're not like wasting paper or ink or anything to do this. So you can have extra space. But the, we're using MLA format. If you're gonna, if you're in one of those majors or career fields that uses MLA, um, then MLA is going to require you to, to format your paper like this. Again, as soon as I open your paper up, I can tell whether or not you paid attention to doing the the standard the right way. Um, just by seeing if, if you've done these simple little things, but like not bolding. All right, uh, more style basic stuff for MLA. So no extra spaces between paragraphs. I already talked about that. Um, works cited is centered at the, the, the words works cited are centered at the top of a new page. Um, when you get to the end, it doesn't matter if there's one word at the top of a page, um, you know, with, with your body of your, your writing, you need to start at a whole new page Works center, uh, works side, it goes at the top of that. You can use the, the insert page break function. Um, that's really helpful to make sure that your, your, your works cited is always going to be at the top of the page. If you have questions about that, let me know. Be glad to help you. But, um, works cited is always there. It's not bolded, it's not underlined, and then you're going to have no extra space between your works cited and your first entry on that works cited list. All right, uh, I need you to pay uh, attention to the tabbing in your works cited. Um, it's really, really simple to do your hanging indent, but that's what we're looking for you to have is, is uh, in your works side list is to have a hanging indent. Um, and so what that means is the first, the, the last name or however you have your entry, that, that entry will start left justified and then all the other lines underneath it will be um, indented that half a space. Um, there's a way to do it uh, through the, the paragraph spacing function and I can help you with that if you need help. If not, just, just search online for um, hanging indent formatting or something like that and you should be able to find it. It's really, really super pretty, so it's pretty simple. Um, this, uh, all outside evidence must be properly attributed. Um, I don't even know, like that is, that's like uh, middle school 101 writing. Like if you have an outside source, you have to have an attribution. Um, and so that source has to be in your works cited list in MLA and you have to have that in-text parenthetical citation in the body of your paper. It's, if you think about them being connected by like wires or something, if I, sh if I shake the or jiggle the, the in-text citation, there had better be something in the list that's gonna move too. And if, I, if you have something in your works cited list, it has to have a, a partner or, or a, um, something joining it in the body of your paper. You don't really get a choice. You have to have both. Um, remember we want to use, um, active voice in all of your writing, try to stay away from passive voice. It's just not, not all that great. Um, yeah, there are downloadable, te downloadable templates for doing, um, setting your papers up both in MLA and APA and all, you know, all the other ones I'm sure. Um, but it's really pretty simple to format them anyway. So might as well learn, just learn how to do it the right way. Um, and then using citation generators, if you want to use them, that's fine. If you think that that's going to be helpful for you. Um, I, I guess 
tell you, everything you need is in, to know how to do this is in Little Seagull. It starts on page uh, 119 in, the, in this book, um, in the green tab section on the top. Everything you need to know about formatting is in here about formatting your sources. And if it's not there, you can find it online. It's really super simple to learn how to do it. And once you know how to do it, it becomes very easy to do it every single time and not have to worry about citation generators. The problem with them is that you can, I can't guarantee you that they're always gonna be right. You're, you're relying on somebody else to do your work for you. If you're cool with that, that's fine. But um, just know that if it's not right, it's still gonna be your responsibility. So I always find it's easier to just learn how to do it. All right. All right, so let's look at some of these, how these in-text citations work, a couple of different ways that they're done. Um, so in this paper, we got this guy, Dan Hoff, who wrote, so I can tell you by looking at this, that this is a book. Um, so this guy, Dan Hoff, or, or lady, I can't remember who it is, um, on page six, if you see that there's this quote here, it says, um, you know, it's a split quote, and it's, it's not... Um, just a big uh, floating or orphan quote that's jammed in the middle of the paper with no explanation. There's good explanation of what's happening, the quote's used properly, and at the end of it, we have this parenthetical citation that says Dan Hoff 69. What that tells me is that this is a book on page 69. You will find these direct quotes that will be word for word um, from that page 69 in this book on this page. And look at, and I want you to pay attention to the period goes on the outside of the parenthetical citation. All right, so here's a different way of doing it. Here's, here's another way. Um, this next quote, this, it starts with John Lorraine. You know, he already, they already kind of, ex, um, they, they've already explained or um, given a little bit of information about the book that this guy, John Lorraine, wrote. Um, and then they use a partial quote here as well. And then, um, because they've already given the, the source's name earlier in the, in the, the, um, in the sentence, all that's required in the parenthetical citation here is um, the page number. Now, if you're using a, like a journal article, you would put J Lorraine's name again. Um, but in this case, because it's a book, uh, you only need the, par the, the page number in that parenthetical citation. But this is exactly the way it's supposed to be done. All right, down to the end again. And we're still talking about this Lorraine guy. And then um, we've got this long, it's a, kind of a longer quote than I would like, in the, but they do have the page number from the book in here as well. So. So this is how we need to do these um, parenthetical citations. All right, so here, um, next I wanna talk about some of the resources that you have uh, for, for doing MLA uh, formatting. Um, the MLA's website is a really good place to start. So the Modern Language Association, here's a link to it here. Um, it'll help you with uh, figuring out how to format your papers. The, um, the Writing Center at the library, um, is a really good place to, to get some help too. There's tons of resources on their website. And also remember that you can go to them. They're not having in-person um, consultations, of course, but you can do a virtual consultation with them either by uploading your paper or your work to, to them. They'll give you some feedback and send it back to you. Or you can do a video chat and talk about your paper. You can upload your paper. They'll look at it with you and you guys can video chat and talk about it. Um, uh, yeah, I would always ask the ECU's um, Writing Center for help if you're at all kind of questioning whether or not you're getting it right. Anyway, so this isn't going to be a, a full-on, this was never intended to be a full-on class on MLA, but I definitely wanted to give you uh, some refreshers and some reminders. Um, I'm here to help you if you have questions, if you need um, some specific tips about how to, I don't know how, like, I don't know how to format this one source. You gotta let me know, I can help you. It's not too hard, um, but I've got tons of time and uh, I'm here for you, so all right, let me know. Thanks, bye.